Right, so this is my uh, 10 watt LED floodlight and it's 12 volts and I've got it hooked up to my bank of batteries here and uh, the idea is that it lights up the well, the bins here because we have a whole raft of bins in this part of the country. Now, when I bought this, you couldn't really get the PIR versions um, on the 12 volt ones, so I put this separate PIR unit on here, but it's not very weatherproofed. And um, But the main thing um, that I want to change on this is that, as you can see, it's broad daylight and the light is on, so it's got no light sensor in it. But I noticed when I took it apart initially um, to uh, install it, that it had a couple of solder points on it marked CDS, which is cadmium sulfide, and that's um, the chemistry used in LDRs, light dependent resistors. So it should be possible to fit a CDS cell into this thing and have it so that it doesn't come on during the day. So let's take it apart again, see how it's uh, fared over, it's been here about over a year, I think, and uh, see if we can do the modification. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is um, disconnect the battery connection for this. Uh, doesn't matter which one I take off. Hmm. That'll do. Okay, so that's the negative taken off. And then the next thing is I want to pull this plug out. And so now I can unscrew the um, cover of this thing and um, see how things are looking inside. The screws have gone a bit rusty. But we'll get this thing out and have a look what state it's in. Well, it looks remarkably unweathered. I mean, there's no moisture in there. In fact, there are no insects living in there either. And that's quite remarkable because the little seal line, that plastic ridge here running around the unit, has gaps in it. So this thing's not sealed at all. Anyway, I'm going to take the module the internal module there out and uh, get this thing inside. Now I did do a little bit of um, weatherproofing on this thing. You can see that uh, circular piece of foam which kind of seals the um, PIR uh, cover, the, um, the sort of domed part of it. And those two connection points just between the chip and the plug and socket um, I think is where the CDS cell goes. It, it doesn't say CDS on this side, but it might say it on the other. Let's have a look. Right, so with the dome plastic piece hinged forwards, you can see the um, PIR, the pyroelectric sensor, which is the metal can thing there. And then, indeed, it does say CDS on those two solder points next to it. So I'm going to try and find my... CDS, which is in amongst that lot somewhere. So uh, I'm going to have a good old rummage through and see if I can find it. And um, fit the uh, CDS cell and see if this thing will stay off during the day and come on at night. Right, I found the uh, light dependent resistors. Here they are. Um, now you can get these in different uh, flavors, not flavors, but on resistance or light resistance and dark resistance um, you can get different um, values. I didn't do any research into these I just bought the cheapest ones I could see and of course I don't know really what resistance this thing is going to require but I'm pretty hopeful it'll just work so um, let's get one soldered in. So that fits rather well actually the um, spacing of the solder pads is perfect I haven't soldered it in yet I'm just going to do that now but there's the uh, light sensor right next to the PIR. Um, let's solder it in and uh, hope it works. Right, that's ready to solder and I'm just waiting for my uh, soldering iron to warm up. So what I thought I'd do was look at this board. This is the um, driver board. And I think the reason this has survived as long as it has is because it doesn't use a relay. It uses these two MOSFETs. Um, I think they're in parallel and they're called MDD1653 so I thought while the soldering iron warms up I'd just look them up and uh, it's a 30 volt N channel trench MOSFET 50 amp 8.5 milliohms. Uh, there it is there and so of course with 
two in parallel, we're talking, assuming the gate drive is um, has been done properly on this, we're talking about four milliohms. So that's uh, quite impressive. And I think this thing was rated at eight amps. Um, load can be put through it. So I quite like the MOSFET version. Um, if I think if this thing did have a relay, um, it probably wouldn't have lasted um, as long as it has. Anyway, let's get this thing soldered. Right, that's all uh, soldered. The soldering didn't go entirely wonderfully, probably because the um, pads are a little bit uh, corroded or weathered. So the solder didn't take brilliantly, but I think it's probably good enough. So I'm going to take that outside, put it all back together and see what we get. Right, so that's um, all been reassembled. I'll just um, put the front cover on and see whether it works. Right, that's uh, all been reassembled. And now if I put the connection back onto the battery, which I'll do, it doesn't come on. Now I was rather hoping that it would have a kind of warm-up period where it did come on, but it actually is not doing anything now. And that might be good or it might be bad. The only way I'm going to know is to uh, wait until it gets dark. And if I move around, it's not setting the thing off. So I'm going to have to wait until dark to see whether the photo cell is working. It's only working from a, uh, a daylight point of view. But, uh, I need to know whether it uh, works at all now. So it's just starting to get a little bit twilighty out here doesn't trigger it if I walk past it. If I just block the light, that set it off. But I'll just do a final test when it's completely dark. And uh, with the clocks having gone back this weekend, of course it's getting dark uh, quite a bit earlier now. So let's walk past. And there we go. Light comes on and the bins are all lit up. So uh, I think I'll call that a success.